Okay, so his things are a little bit more installed, a little bit more tidied up. What I've done inside of here is I've used these little cable holder deals to just kind of pin some of these to the ceiling just to get them out of the way. Um, I, I don't want a lot of stuff brushing up against these terminals or running the risk of arcing anything. Is there's, you know, there's a lot of cables around. But as you can see with the improvement in the wiring and after I got that little batch of cable tips in, I've been uh, making sure these are all color coded. Okay, the, the, the black is negative. Uh, red is positive. This single white cable is also a positive. I put a little tape on there to mark it. That's getting replaced probably tomorrow just with a red cable. Uh, will it work any better? No, but it's safer and it's more clear cut when I do it that way. What I've done here, instead of buying a $30 switch uh, to select between the solar power going to the charge controller or the grid tie inverter is I'm running a common ground which is the black wire going between here and uh, going to the grid tie inverter and to the uh, charge controller that's my common ground my uh, the black wire is a negative now the, the only reason you see black wires coming in here to a positive connection is because that's the way the trailer was originally set up like house wiring okay um, but red is positive, black is negative, should be. We can, uh, yeah, we can get under there, yeah. Okay, we got those all in the right place. It's kind of an optical illusion because of the angle we're looking at it. But, um, yeah, so what will happen is, right now I'm set up for off-grid operation, which means that my power goes from my panels, which is these incoming wires here, to um, this positive cable, which is just pinned up here. It's not really, it's not actually connected to anything but the charge controller. Um, but it's it's connected to the charge controller. And hopefully these, these things are is showing okay in the light here. It's connected to the charge controller. And then the charge controller uh, runs the batteries. The charge controller runs the 12 volt power that's distributed throughout the trailer. The batteries run the the pure sine wave inverter, which right now, because the trailer's main power is plugged into that, activates all of the grid power outlets in the trailer, okay? Now, the other thing I have is, because there was a grid power outlet there for the old refrigerator, the current refrigerator plugs directly into the inverter. The What I have here is the power strip, okay, and then it's basically a power strip into a power strip here. I, I am not going to run everything off every plug, but when I run rechargers and ba cell phone chargers and all that kind of stuff in there, I can leave it plugged in and, um, and, and be able to run it that way. The other thing is back in this location is probably where a computer, uh, where a UPS is going to get installed. I'm going to have the option of running this power strip off of a UPS instead of off of this. However, this whole system, because I've got a pure sine wave inverter and some big ass UPS batteries anyway, it, it acts as a big U UPS. Now, if I'm going to go um, grid tie with this, then what I have to do is I'm going to undo this, this little bolt here, undo this cable, leave it just in the back, I'll push it to the back, and this little jumper cable will get installed on that bolt and then to here. And once I'm in grid tie mode, the charge controller is is electrically get disconnected from the batteries. Now we've got a common ground, but that doesn't matter. The positive is going to be off, therefore there's no power loop. And um, and what's going to happen is you never want to run a grid tie inverter off of batteries unless it's like a school demonstration. Okay, that's not how those things work. The way a grid tie inverter works is you take the surplus power that you produce off your solar panels and you sell it to the electric company. Or in my microgrid arrangement, what you're going to do is you'll take your surplus power and you pump it into a common grid that you and your friends are sharing when you have your rigs parked close to each other. What you're not going to do is charge batteries and run a grid tie at the same time unless you've got a really, really high-end uh, charge controller that's capable of doing that. And for smaller um, on-grid, off-grid operation, this is the way it's going to go. You might scale this up to a 5,000 watt inverter for uh, a larger application, maybe 
uh, a 600 watt grid tie inverter or two or three grid tie inverters those are stackable you, you can have as many grid tie inverters on a system as you want but right now I'm just using a single 300 watt grid tie inverter that's the limit of the panels I have on the roof plus this other panel that I'm going to install and so it's just a 300 watt inverter would I be getting a large check from the uh, power company? No but it would allow me to sell a little power back and reduce my electric bill once my batteries are charged up and if I'm someplace within plug-in distance of a building that gets grid power but here by, by getting a lot of these cables out of the way I've made room for my third battery uh, the guy I bought these from has some available from the same batch you don't want to use a totally different battery in fact it's not even only good to mix new batteries with used batteries but I'm gonna do it. Uh, it and I don't think it'll be the end of the world either I've got uh, some batteries available to me from the exact same batch I'm gonna put a third battery in and th that basically increases my fuel tank and there's a possibility that with a little bit more electricity available I'm going to be able to get my air conditioner running and maybe get my microwave to go at full power but right now basically if the instructions on something on a microwave say run it uh, two and a half minutes I gotta run at five and I I've made a few test videos right now I'm not going to post them all because some of them I made little mistakes on so I'm posting the best of the videos but I've been here for a little over an hour working on these little cable connectors and stuff and I've used uh, two percent of my battery okay that's it and now right now I have uh, my negative side here all insulated this is the positive side and there's no way you could reach a negative terminal down here to arc anything out right now and even when I close this it's all wood now when this is closer to done my trick on this to get this all nice and tight is I grab this end with some pliers and I hit this with uh, this impact wrench okay and when I'm working with this impact wrench you're going to notice this little Hitachi great tool um, unfortunately its batteries don't match anything else I own but when I got to work in a confined space like this that's good the other thing is for the electrical work the entire housing on this everything but the little screwdriver shaft is uh, insulated okay which means that if I'm around on this stuff okay I'm not gonna arc out now if some for some reason the part of your body kind of arcs between well I should I'm not gonna fuck with that but they tell me that if a part of your body arcs between positive and negative uh, you're not gonna die from that but if you've got a screwdriver in your hand and you arc between positive and negative um, you you could have problems uh, if you get a metal watch on you could have problems if you've got a metal ring on uh, yeah that, that I've heard of it melting to people just never seen it um, but the way I've set this up uh, your your positive and negatives are not physically close enough to each other for a wire to come off and stretch over unless it's something that wouldn't really uh, connect itself like if this were to fall off and connect over here um, that's all the, the 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 panel side of the charger control. I don't I don't think you know, I don't want it to happen but the thing is I screwed all that together with impacts too so that's not going anywhere and once this is uh, set up with a little jumper cable basically what I do is if I go grid tie I disconnect this cable just shove it to the back take this little cable put it on the bolt on one end and the other end goes to the grid tie inverter and then my panels will not be feeding the charge controller at all what they're going to do is they're going to feed the grid tie inverter now if I want to charge these batteries up I would have to have a separate little trickle charger that does that and they're not very expensive okay so I could do that I could run grid tie and then I could run a little grid, a trickle charger but remember the grid tie inverter does not put out any power unless it senses grid power so that would be what you do when it's plugged in now these trailers come with a 30 amp charger um, which is made to run everything at the time uh, I don't I don't like where it's located I don't like the piece of equipment I'm, I'm probably just gonna pull it out and sell it and use a smaller trickle charger so if I ever have this thing set up on grid tie I'm not using all of the power I'm producing just to keep my batteries up because I would never be using the inverter when I'm tied into the grid 
so I would just use a small trickle charger to keep this thing going and that's it and and maybe not even that maybe just periodically um, use a, a really small panel to top off the batteries and that really small panel plugs into the cigarette lighter plug on the other side but anyway that's uh, that's one of the big updates here I've got some other updates I've, I've gotten other videos I'm not sure which ones are gonna upload right now but yeah uh, this is a grid tie system. We're all up and running. I still need to insulate that and get that. This actually never gets connected. That's just storage. But the next big stage is to install this other panel. And uh, and then if anybody wants that big roll-up panel, I, I've got that on sale. I've got two of them I'm probably not going to use. So, um, yeah, that's part of the learning process on this is you buy stuff that you're not going to use and got to sell off. But, um, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. I got a good deal on it. I'll give someone a good deal.